Welcome to another History Mystery. I'm Mimi, and today we're taking an adventure outside of Thomasville into the county to a town called Oclockney. If you're not from this area, that name may sound rather odd, and depending on who you talk to, it may be pronounced and spelled in different ways. So, why is that? And where did this name come from? And what could it mean? We looked into some research to find out the answers to these questions. The obvious answer to the question of how the town of Oclockney got its name is from the Oclockney River, but that makes for a very short and very dull video. So instead, we'll go back, way back, to see how the river got its name too. The river which we now know as the Oclockney River, or the Oclockney River if you live in Florida, starts in Worth County, flows southward into Colquitt County before hanging left and cutting westward through several counties before looping back east and emptying into a bay in Apalachicola, Florida. The northwest corner of Thomas County is home to part of this river, and the town is located along it. Like most rivers, it provides a habitat for various types of marine life, as well as a food and water source for terrestrial wildlife. In other words, everyone wants to hang out by a river if they want to survive. Humans are no different. The first people to arrive in this area thousands of years ago were hunter-gatherers whose needs were met along the river. Eventually, other groups moved into the area, bringing new ideas and ways of life. One big name includes the Mississippi Mound Builders, a culture that originated around the modern southern states of America and spread throughout the eastern half of the country, including much of Georgia and Florida. Just like with people today, these groups were slightly different based on where they lived. In our area, a group known as the Fort Walton Culture developed. They weren't too different from their neighbors, except that they made their pottery using slightly different materials based on what they had. As clusters of these little family groups developed into larger villages, they expanded their trading along rivers, like the Oclockney up north into middle Georgia. They became more heavily influenced by their trade partners, and the cultural practices of the people of this area changed into what archaeologists call the Leon Jefferson culture, named after the counties in which archaeological evidence was found. These were the people living in our area when the first Spanish explorers arrived here in the 1500s. Their territory covered the Florida Panhandle up to South Georgia and west from the Osceola River to the Oclockney River. They built villages, set up trade networks, and influenced their environment with controlled burns in the longleaf pine forests. Their capital city was located around modern-day Tallahassee, a site they called Anahika, and many of their cultural centers or mounds can still be seen in the area today. When Spanish explorers and conquistadors arrived in Florida, they learned of a land north of the Big Bend called Appalachian by the neighboring indigenous people. This is where we get the modern-day name of Appalachie for the people who lived in our area, as well as the name Appalachian, used to name the mountain range that extends north of us. Like most encounters with the Spanish, this meeting did not go well for the Appalachian people. In 1528, they managed to fight off a group of invading Spanish explorers, leaving only four to tell the tale. But in 1539, they had a much more formidable foe, Hernando de Soto. De Soto and his men quickly captured Anhica thanks to their horses. But not long after, the Appalachian learned they could easily defeat these invaders by attacking their horses. Sorry, horses. Eventually, disease and the constant invading by the Spanish wore the Appalachian forces down. Spanish missionaries moved in and converted the remaining Appalachian people to Catholicism before sending them to work at missions, like Mission San Luis, and ranches across Florida. But the Spanish couldn't catch them all. The Appalachian territory extended farther north than the Spanish were willing to settle in. The Appalachian people who lived in these areas managed to continue living there for several centuries more even as European settlers began infiltrating more and more of their lands. Many Appalachian married into the white families around here, but a few went on to form the Seminole Nation by joining with other indigenous groups throughout Florida. But what about Oclockney? Well, when those early Spanish explorers and missionaries first entered the area, they made maps of the land and its features. The Appalachian did not have a written language, but the Spanish took the Appalachian names and wrote their own version of what they heard. The name Oclockney comes from two different words in the Appalachian language. While this language is no longer used today, 
It was part of the Muscogee language family and was very similar to the Hichiti and Miccosukee branches of the language. The first word in a clockney is oki, meaning water. The Okefenokee Swamp also starts with oki, as does the Okapilko Creek, all waterways. The second word is lagana, or lugni, meaning yellow. So, to the Appalachian people, this was the yellow water. And if you visit the Oklahoma River, you might notice that it doesn't have the cleanest looking water running through it. That's because the northern parts of the river, including our area, run through clay-rich soil which gets carried away by the current, mixing that red and sandy colored clay in with the water and giving it its distinctive color. For many generations, it was believed the name meant crooked water, but nothing has been found to support that, unlike the very yellow water seen in this picture. Over time, translation issues, thanks to the Spanish, combined with non Apalachee speakers moving into the area, changed the name of the Oki Lugni, or the Oki Lagana, to the modern name Aklakni, or Aklakani. Local poet Lola Stubbs got the point when she wrote When indigenous man trod the river's banks, swam root dyed currents swift and free, breathed Oki Lagni, yellow waters, the white man echoed, Okilotni. As for the town in Thomas County, the name comes from its proximity to the river. American settlers spread out into the area as early as the 18 teens. But it wasn't until the 1860s that the town was formally settled, and it didn't have a charter until 1877. This was around the time the railroad was laid through the town, connecting Thomasville to Albany, with a clockney in the middle. Today, a clockney is a small town of around 700 people. People from all over still go to swim and fish in the river, and events still celebrate the town and the people who lived there. If you're interested in learning more about this town and others in the county, be sure to stop by the Thomasville History Center, where we have pictures like these and records that reveal the history of Thomas County. Thanks for watching!